All right, one of the students actually asked me this question. They say, sir, sir, can make a video explain this or not? A fair dice are rolled twice consecutively. If the experiment is carried out 360 times, how many times at least one perfect square can be obtained? So, okay, just in case some students have to, no idea what is dice. Dice is basically uh, when you play some board game, you should be able to see dice. Yeah, you have some number from 1 to 6. One. You should have something like 1... One, two, here maybe like one, two, three, and so on. So, yeah. So we know the sample space for dice is basically one, two, three, four, five, and six. So from this sample space, how many perfect square number do we have? Yeah. If you have no idea what is perfect square number, means those number after square root, you will still get the integer. Example, one is a perfect. Okay. I use s to represent the perfect square number. Okay perfect square number so my s over here i know one is a perfect square number because you square root one you still get integer positive one and i know four is a perfect square number because you square root four you get two and then the other number like five and six you square root them you get decimal then it so yes therefore i only have um two perfect square number out of the six here so therefore what is the probability of getting the perfect square number? So, it's 2. This one is a sample space, right? So, it's 2 out of 6. Where do I get 2? Basically, I, because I have 1 and 4. 6 is because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I have 6 choice here, isn't it? But here, I have 2 options, isn't it? So, after simplify, I know the probability of getting perfect square number is uh, 1 over 3. Okay, now, I have to ask myself, then... What is the probability of not getting perfect square number? So not perfect square number, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 4 out of 6 after simplify is 2 over 3. Okay, after understand this idea, then we come back to this question. They roll the dice twice consecutively. That means, over here, there's possible when I do this one, First time I get perfect square, second time also I get perfect square. This is one of the option. Or first time I get perfect square number, maybe second time I don't get perfect square number. Or first time I don't get perfect square number, but second time I get perfect square number. Why I need to include so many of them? Because here they say at least one perfect square. So that's mean at least one right means I can get one perfect square number or two perfect square number. So you can see here I actually getting one perfect square. Here I also getting one. Here I get two. Can I include none of them? No, because the question say at least one perfect square. So therefore, this is all the option I have. All right, then only I will do the carry out 360 times after I find the answer. Okay, then we go come to the answer. If I will get perfect square number, probably here already tell me is 1 over 3. So this is 1 over 3, multiply 1 over 3. Plus, this one is basically perfect square 1 over 3. Not got getting perfect square is 2 over 3, times 2 over 3. Then this one, not getting perfect square, 2 over 3. Getting perfect square, 1 over 3. Then I will use a calculator quickly solve this one. This is 1 over 9, this is 2 over 9, 2 over 9, total should be 509. So what is the probability 509 here means? Means this is a probability to get at least S must be perfect square number must be at least one. Okay? But because here they only carry out two basically is at least one and one and two. Okay now because this experiment actually they carry out like 300 360 time right so therefore, I will just need to use 360, multiply the 509, and then I simplify this one, I get 40, 40 times 5 is 200. So, based on this experiment, I expected I should average get 200 times, uh, which I will get at least one perfect square number from the dice experiment. So the student also told me the answer is 200 internet. So yeah, this is how you get 200. Yeah, I hope this um 
probability question can help this student and also my other student in my YouTube to understand better about probability topics. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a like and then I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Take care.